Hey, I'm Jay Kumar, the Bass Blaster, and this is your Seafoam Top 5 of the Week in Bass Fishing. Number 1. We've got a new type of bait that's not for forward-facing sonar? I can't believe it. Yeah, the guy who added the bait is Josh Jones. He's a former cable guy. And part-time crappie guide who got onto giant Texas bass with forward-facing sonar and now over the last few years has caught more double-digit bass than maybe anybody or at least everybody except maybe a few other people walking on the planet. He posted this bait and said that he's caught about 40 double-digit bass on it in the last 10 months or so and calls it one of the most innovative baits to come along in a little while. Well, obviously that's a big statement. It got my attention, so I called him. He said it's made by Sixth Sense and is called the Panorama. And even though it looks like a swim bait, he said it's kind of like a cross between a swim bait and a flutter spoon. Now he likes fishing the bigger nine inch size of this new bait, side hooked, and he lets it flutter down uh, to big fish that he's stalking using forward facing sonar. In other words, he's fishing it like a spoon, which you do not need to have forward-facing sonar to fish. And the other techniques he likes it for, you likewise don't need forward-facing sonar for. One is he likes to fish the seven inch size power shotting or bubba shotting, which is basically just a heavy duty drop shot rig. And that's the other, uh, what he likes to use the five inch, the smallest size with is a drop shot, even with spinning gear. But he says there's at least 20 more ways to fish it, and he hasn't even tried them all yet. Now you can see the bait has an ultra-realistic finish, which is what Sixth Sense is known for, and it's supposed to be out pretty soon. The only deal I wonder about is that name, Panorama? Well, I guess it'll be easier for us bass fishermen to pronounce than it is for Scottish people to say purple burglar alarm. There's some Scottish people that kind of say purple burglar alarm, purple burglar alarm. Man, maybe Sixth Sense should have just shortened it to... Panama! Panama! Number two! Kiyoya Fujita won one here. Specifically, the Bassmaster Elite Series Tournament on Lake Champlain. Now, Kiyoya is a rookie on the Bassmaster Elite Series, but he's won a bunch of tournaments in Japan and is a four-time Angler of the Year there, so obviously the dude's a stick. And since Japanese fishermen are so good with finesse techniques, it's really no surprise that they do so well here in the smallmouth tournaments. Now, for his win, he drop shot at a three-inch piece of Jackal Yami stick worm. He fished a 5.2 inch Jackal Revoltage RV Drift Fry swim bait thing on a 1 8 ounce ball head. And he fished what he calls a Pro Series Spoon. It might be called a Counterback, something like that. He fished the whole time looking at Garmin Live Scope and his small mouth were always around big schools of bait. Big props to a man, it's a huge accomplishment, but him and Taku Ito will, and the other guys will have to win a Bassmaster Classic like the OG of guys coming from Japan to here to fish, Takahiro Omori. He did it, and they have to at least get there to be up there. Don't bet against him, man. Number three. Not bad for a newbie. If you're keeping track, that's now the fourth Elite Series win by a rookie four out of eight tournaments so far this season, so obviously 50%. I've done the math. Checks out. And those four rookies are really three rookies. It's Kiyoya, and then before that, Joey Sefuentes, and before that, Will Davis Jr., and then before that, Joey Sefuentes again. And all of those wins were using forward-facing sonar. Does that indicate anything? Sure it does, because before forward-facing sonar, that would never happen. What I mean is you had to come on the tour, learn the lakes, pay your dues, and then you started doing well, and then you started winning. Not even the mighty Kevin Van Dam had that much of an impact in terms of wins that fast. And just to hammer this home, check out the top five from the Champlain Bassmaster Elite. Now you already know the winner is a rookie, Kiyoya. Justin Atkins finished second. This is his third year on the Elites, but he actually 
as it happened, was the first rookie back in the day to win the FLW Tours FLW Cup Championship. So obviously he does well as a rookie. Uh, Cody Huff was third at Champlain, and this is only his second year as a pro. California's Brian Smith is a rookie and finished fourth. And Jay Shakurit finished fifth. This is only his second year on the, on the elites as well, but he won his rookie year last year at the St. Lawrence River Elite. Now you might be like, well, that's because Champlain is a smallmouth tournament. Well, yes and no, largies always play there. But anyhow, that's the point. Smallmouth tournaments are forward-facing sonar tournaments. So in other words, guys who are really good with forward-facing sonar should do well in them. Now, I'm not sure how this forward-facing sonar bump or effect is gonna last, but in the meantime, maybe we should call these guys rookie monsters. Rookie! Um, nom, 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 nom. Close enough! Number four! Are we about to see more rubber-skirted jigs? Sounds like it. I talked to a guy in Alabama named Jeff Shelton who owns a company called Spanker Jigs, a small company, and he is about to come out with tabs for making jigs, tabs of material, of skirt material, that are round rubber. Now, I'm sure you know you can get tabs of silicone material right now, but for a couple good reasons, Getting tabs of round rubber has been impossible until Jeff figured it out. And he figured it out because he was so frustrated that he couldn't make rubber jigs as fast as he could make ones with silicone skirts. Anyway, the jig skirts will be available in solid, of course, and also what he calls a little barbed wire pattern that looks like it gives it a little texture of some kind. Personally, I can't wait to see them on jigs because I prefer uh, rubber and solid colors to the transparent stuff most of the time. One thing I know for sure, I'm gonna spank some on it, man. Number five. Did we just have the first college NIL deal involving a bass boat? If you're not familiar with the term, NIL is a shortened form of the dish nachos carnitas with jalapenos and pineapple salsa. Okay, not true, but man, I've been thinking of that stuff all day. Man, I'm hungry now. Okay, NIL is really short for name, image, and likeness, and some college athletes and recruits are getting paid ridiculous amounts of money and other stuff for it. But I'd never heard of an NIL deal involving a bass boat until now. It seems like Oklahoma State tried to keep quarterback Spencer Sanders out of the transfer portal with an NIL deal of several hundred grand, a bass boat, and a truck. Now, even though Spencer grew up in Texas, I'm guessing he's not really a diehard bass fisherman because if he was, he would have taken that deal. Okay, I have no idea if he fishes, but that's pretty cool, and it shows that the Oklahoma State boosters might know what's up. Like, they might know the difference between a whopper plopper and a spook. What's the difference? That's all I got for you this week. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Seafoam. Go to BassBlaster.com or .rocks to sign up for the Juicy Bass Blaster email. See you next week. God bless you.